Jeff Alenko, Dees Performance, here with Katie Coleman, one of our machinists here. Uh, we've got a 6-7 coming block that's getting slaved, and we've had some people ask in the past about doing a video show and the whole process of slaving a block. So uh, this is getting ductile iron flange sleeves. You hear that a lot uh, in the diesel industry. The flange refers to the uh, top flange here. So we've got our normal OD of the sleeve, and then we have this flange that has a larger uh, diameter on it. And then we're going to cut a counter bore in the block, press the sleeve in, and then this top flange will sit on the counter bore and keep to where the sleeve can't drop. So much stronger, better design, and it gives you a nice surface uh, for your fire ring to sit on if you're on the fire rings like we will be here. So the OD of your uh, top flange is very important, something you thought about ahead of time. Um, and so we're just going to run through the basic operation. We got it in our boring bar, everything's set up, ready to go on the first hole. So we're going to bore it. So first we've already measured the OD of all of our sleeves. Uh, you always want to check them on top by the flange to make sure that they're round. And we're going to leave them uh, with one to one and a half thousandths press fit. So we're not going to do that in the boring bar. We're going to get it to about five and we're going to hone it. Um, actually, what we say, we're leaving about one thousandths because the purpose of honing it is to get it as slick as possible. After you bore, you're gonna have a lot of fractured metal, very rough cut. So we put in the hone and we'll use 600 grit CBNs, go in there and knock all that fractured metal off, make it as slick and smooth as possible. And the reason for that is heat transfer, uh, heat dissipation. The more contact area, metal to metal you have, the more it's gonna transfer heat. If you have a rough finish, uh, you're gonna have air pockets and you're not gonna transfer heat. So very important step. This is a dry block, so not that big a deal, but we still do it right. We still want it to transfer out and get into that concrete and do its job. So we're set up, we're gonna bore the first hole. We'll come back, we'll uh, demonstrate cutting that counter board. And then when it goes to the hone, we'll show you honing it, we'll install and we'll do the whole thing. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so we bored our uh, board within one, one and a half thousand, so where we want to be on our final board. Time for the uh, cut the counter board. So we measure our counter board, the height of it, of our counter board, and then we'll go in and cut our, um, our, our, our flange, and then we'll cut our counter board to within five to ten thousandths of the uh, height of our flange here. That way, after we get it pressed in, uh, we're going to have five to ten thousandths protruding, and then we're going to deck it. Uh, you can get a little bit closer, but you're on the risk of messing up when you're hand feeding this down or even in a CNC machine if you can be off a thousandths or two. So it's a lot easier to leave that and we just go through and deck it real fast, get them down where that the gets to the deck height, and then we take one or two off the deck. So, uh, so we're getting ready to do the sleeve. All right, so we're ready to cut the counter bore. Katie, go ahead. So again, the bore is already two size. Now we're cutting our counter bore up top for our flange. So we've got a flat face cutter and we are hand feeding down, cutting our counter bore. Okay, so we're done with the boring bar. We've got uh, all six boards to size within a couple thousandths of where we want to be. And then our counter boards are cut to the correct uh, OD and the correct depth. So next step is the hone. So we'll get it over the hone and we'll show you what we're doing there and we'll keep moving on. Okay, so the next step, honing. So we've got the block in the hone. We've got a Rottler CNC hone here. Um, we've got our sleeve sitting right in front of the hone, right when we're getting ready to do it. The purpose of that is we're trying to get one to one and a half thousandths press fit. That's such a precise amount. We're going to check this at the same temperature at the time that we're doing that block. 
So we're checking the sleeve right in front of the hone. We're using our dial bore gauge, checking that block. We're taking out such a little amount, we're not worried about heating it up. Um, so we're making sure it's really accurate. So we've got our sleeve, we got a mic, the block is in the hone, ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and work some magic here. 600 grit CBNs, and we'll show you the outcome. All right, so the next up after honing, uh, we gotta put the sleeves in. So there's, there's many different ways you can put sleeves in. Uh, some people drive them in with a hammer. Uh, most people would put a wood block on top, drive them in with a large hammer. Some people press them in. Uh, we use liquid nitrogen, shrinks them. They drop in effortlessly as we're gonna show you here. And then uh, we have another step afterwards that we do to ensure that they're seated all the way because that is the key thing. And we wanna prevent any uh, galling between the sleeve and the block surface. So we found this is the best method. We're gonna show you how we do it real quick. So we've got our liquid nitrogen viewer, the tank that holds it. You always gotta use safety precautions with liquid nitrogen. Unless you got a wart you wanna burn off on your finger or something. So get in on that, check that out. So uh, when you're taking a room temperature part and putting in liquid nitrogen that's about 180 to 200 degrees below zero, so that, that's just the reaction, you know, from the, uh, the temperature difference there. But what that's doing the whole time, that's shrinking as much as seven thousandths of an inch. So we've got one to one and a half thousandths press fit. We're shrinking that seven thousandths. So do the math, it should drop right in. Um, when it stops bubbling, the temperatures have equalized, pull it out, drop it right in. So that bad boy's still going. So we'll give it a sec and we'll be ready. Alright. Again, safety is key. I got welding gloves, glasses, pliers. Bam, just like that. So as I had mentioned, uh, we have another step which we'll show you here in a minute. Uh, it is very important that you ensure that the uh, flanged sleeve is fully seated. You could do a really nice job boring, honing, cutting your counterboard, put the sleeve in. But if that sleeve protrudes as much as one or two thousandths uh, above that, above the uh, step that you cut on your counterboard, and then over time it settles, your firing isn't going to seat, you're going to blow your head gasket, you're doing the whole job over again. So that's going to be next. We're going to get the rest of these in off camera. We're going to come back and show you the very important step for doing sleeves. Okay, so all of our sleeves are in. We got all six sleeves in with the liquid nitrogen. So now uh, the important part that I was referring to. We're going to measure the height of the flange, and then we're gonna use a port of power with a through hole cylinder, and we're gonna pull down on the sleeve, and then we're gonna go back and check, and guarantee that we'll drop some. And what we're doing, we're gonna we're pulling that sleeve down, making sure that the uh, flange is sitting down on that counterboard all the way, so we know it's not gonna drop with heat and move around with heat cycles. So, we got a sleeve height tool here, which is what we use for checking piston protrusion and a lot of other things. We are sitting on the machine deck, making sure we're not sitting on top of the uh, flange of the next sleeve. So our bar is sitting on the deck, nice and true. And I am zeroed on the deck, not where the sleeve is, okay? So on the deck itself. I'll lift my indicator up, slide it straight in. My sleeve is 24 thousandths high. So 24 thousandths above the deck surface where I'm checking it right here and I will go back and check it in the same spot. So we typically, uh, when we cut the counterboards, as we discussed earlier, we uh, cut them and we, we aim to leave 10 thousandths protrusion. Uh, that way there's a little room for error. If you, if you don't stop the feed in time and it takes another couple thousandths out, you got wiggle room. So that's what we typically shoot for. So if this had 10, that means there's 14,000 sticking up. So we'll uh, come back, we'll have our tooling on, we'll show you, we'll pull it down in place, and then we'll take it back apart and check it again. All right, so we've got our tooling set up. What we have here, we have this uh, steel disc here that we got a couple different sizes for different bore ranges. It's got a shoulder on both sides. Shoulder sits on top of the flange of the sleeve, and it's got a, another shoulder that uh, helps hold it center in the, uh, in the bore of the sleeve. It's bored pretty precisely for a one inch threaded rod. We got hardened threaded rod, a through hole cylinder for a port of power, 
port of power hand pump. And then we have a, a real nice heavy duty uh, steel rod here machined so that we're actually pulling on the, uh, the pulling on the mains and not hurting anything, but we're pulling the mains so we're pulling straight down. It's the, you know, the best foundation that we have here. So we pull off the mains, pull that sleeve down. And again, 20 ton, we're not going crazy, but this will ensure that that sleeve is pulled fully seated. So for demonstration purposes for this video, we have an indicator set up here on the plate. We got it zeroed out. This is at an angle. It's not necessarily for accuracy for the amount that it moves. It's just to show how much it does or does not move when we demonstrate this. And most importantly, to see if it springs back up at all. So we could catch, if there was any spring back, we could catch that now, pull down again to ensure that it stayed put before we bust this down and put our sleeve height tool back on. So let's go ahead and get in here. Uh, I've got this zeroed. So you can see it's zeroed and we'll start pulling tension. So right there, it just jumped eight thousandths. And okay, and it looks like we're yeah. cool. So nine thousandths total. Uh, but you've seen it jump eight. So even though it dropped in and settled down um, when we with the liquid nitrogen, once it shrunk up, eight thousandths it was picking up. So even if you even if you drove these in with a hammer, you're gonna have at least a couple thousands sticking up, very likely, especially if you popped it down and it jumped back up. So very important. Um, and it looked like I looked like it might have gone up one, so let's go ahead and pull again. So get back in here. I'm not going to touch the gauge so it stays accurate. So we're on 92. There's one thousandths. Yep. And again, we're tight. So go ahead and crack it loose. Let's watch it this time. Okay, let's do it again, please. Yep. All right. One more time. All right, do her again. All right, one more time. And this time we're gonna let it sit for a while. Um, and then we're gonna pop it off and pull a tool in, go back with the indicator and check it. Um, it could be a little deflection there, just that it's 1,000 pretty much religiously over time. So there's a good chance we're seeing a little deflection or uh, distortion in the plate uh, that's going on there because we're going back to the same point every time. So go ahead, let's see what it does. Crack it loose. Yeah, one more time. So that was about a half a thousand set time was it. So go ahead, crack it loose. All right, pull on her again. It's, just, it's exact same every time, so I, it's probably deflection. Again, we normally wouldn't do this with the indicator. Um, we're trying to demonstrate, so we're gonna go ahead and throw it back on there and see how much it dropped. But we've seen it drop eight, nine thousandths there, so I feel like we're good. But as you can see, even just with this tooling, is giving a little bit. You can imagine with that moving eight thousandths, 20 ton quarter power, um, how easily it would be to have you know a couple thousandths uh, stick it up, you know, protruding. Uh, even after you deck it, and then it's going to drop. So very important step. So we'll bust this back off, and we'll show you the results. All right, so we busted our tooling down. We put our sleeve height gauge back in place. Check it in the same spot. You know, this isn't the most accurate thing because we're using the same tool, but, you know, two different, two different, uh, different times. But uh, we are right at 16, so we're, we're verifying the 8,000th jump that we've seen. Um, I got to roll out the what the indicator was showing is deflection and again normally we wouldn't do that I was trying to do that for demonstration purposes but this did just back up that it moved eight thousand so we're sticking up uh, you know 1615 or 16 um, so now we're gonna go put it in the surfacer we're gonna deck the block we'll act, we're gonna pull the other five down same thing make sure our sleeves are seated all the way and then we're gonna deck the block so we'll come back and we'll show you decking it and we'll be finished Okay, so as we mentioned, the last step is uh, surfacing the uh, deck. We gotta get the top of the sleeves cut down, even with the deck, and then get the deck cut to where it's true. Uh, there was a few spots on this deck that we really didn't like, so we wound up taking five thousandths off. 
Uh, sometimes we take even less than that off when we can. This had been decked before, uh, but we want to take a five off, got it real nice and clean. And the important part is, you know, we showed you how we, we made sure the sleeves were pulled down all the way so that the flange was sitting on the counterboard, and then we go in and deck them. So you come in here and see how uh, we've got the uh, flange in the deck uh, nice and true. And the last step now, we'll go in and we'll recut our firing grooves in the top of the flange or the sleeve. And this thing will be ready to hone and go back together. So uh, there you have it, uh, ductal iron flange sleeves showing the full process. Uh, if you have a CNC machine, obviously it's gonna cut some steps out. The CNC engine center can bore, cut the counter bores, um, and then deck it afterwards. But you know, we still have a, a manual rottler boring bar. We got a CNC surfacer here. CNC home. Um, so, you know, it works good, just a little more time consuming, but that's the steps.